but from this angle, you can see that the fake leg is supporting the plank. Here it is before the trick begins, waiting for the magician to step into position. For a closer look, the girl removes the fake leg. From the back, it looks like he should fire his tailor. Now here's the plank supported by the steel brace. When the fake leg is in place, you'd never suspect it was there. And that's how the magician creates the illusion that a gorgeous young woman can float through life with no visible means of support. Here's a trick that's common among street magicians. It uses a seemingly ordinary everyday object. After some minor league dumpster diving, the magician finds a crumpled soda can in the trash. Looks like someone doesn't recycle. No matter, the magician plans to do a little recycling of his own. A magical gesture and a shake to prove the can is empty and... How about that? The dents disappear. Well, most of them do. Still pretty impressive. Another magical gesture and the magician attempts to pull the tab and break the hermetic seal. Wait, I thought that this can was empty and discarded. We'll just see about that. A nice cold beverage, anyone? That's how you recycle a soda can by magic. But we all know there's no such thing. First, the mass magician selects what appears to be a discarded soda can. Before the trick began, the magician secretly prepared this ordinary can. Using a very sharp knife, he makes a tiny puncture in the can and outsprays the soda. The magician releases just enough soda to create an air pocket inside the can. Before all of the liquid can escape, he seals the hole with some waterproof tape. Next, the magician covers the pop top with a small circle of black paper. From a distance, the black disc creates the illusion that you are looking into an open and empty can. In reality, the top is still factory sealed. Finally, the magician carefully bends the can, creating the impression that it's been crushed and discarded. The stagehand places the can on top of a pile of phony garbage, and the illusion is ready to begin. To perform the trick, the magician picks up the can and gently shakes it. Here's where paying attention during science class comes in handy. Shaking the can causes the gas bubbles inside to build up pressure. As the pressure increases, the air inside the can expands and causes the dents to pop back out. Next, the magician secretly removes the disc of black paper, revealing the factory seal on the top of the can is untouched. All that's left to do now is flip up the tab, break the seal, and pour out the remaining soda. It looks convincing, but when the masked magician is around, you can bet it's not the real thing. Next, find out how a beautiful girl loses her head and feet when she faces razor-sharp stainless steel blades. And then the magician blows the secrets to capturing a spirit, impaling his arm, causing a woman to materialize by magic, and making a five-ton elephant appear in a crowd of spectators. The magician has something dangerous in store for us, using this large circular contraption. No, it's not an industrial washing machine or an overgrown donut. It's actually a torture device with a potentially lethal twist. You can see that a table bisects the contraption. There's nothing above or below, as the magician is willing to prove. And since he's probably a bit too stout to fit inside that ring of terror, he calls in one of his lovely assistants. Cute outfit. And the ponytail is a nice touch. Let's hope she looks as good when he gets through with her. 
his team of assistants enters and quickly goes to work. The two male assistants lift the girl onto the table while the two women prepare to secure her inside the ring. Meanwhile, the magician stands by, ready to take all of the credit. Now that the girl is in position, we can see that her head and ponytail protrude from one side of the ring and her feet hang out the other. Whatever he has in mind, this guy's pretty kinky. And he goes for girls with bare feet. This illusion is more telling than I expected. If there are any psychiatrists in the audience, I bet you could have a field day with a masked man. He places the girl in a trance. The lovely lady is at his mercy. And it's too bad for her because he's now holding a very sharp blade made of surgical steel. Maybe she should have read the fine print in her contract before getting into that thing. The blade goes into the device and through the girl just above the knee. Told you he was kinky. But he's not done. A second blade is now inserted straight through her torso. For those of you scoring at home, she's now divided in three sections. But she hasn't lost all motor skills. Her feet are still moving. The magician directs two of his assistants to do more of his dirty work. The device is now rotated a quarter turn, separating the girl's head and feet from her midsection. For a girl who's completely gone to pieces, she doesn't seem to mind. Maybe her ponytail is too tight. Better put her back together before she realizes something is up that shouldn't be. She's lowered back to a more appropriate horizontal position, but the magician will leave it up to her to put her life back together. So how does the magician slice his beautiful assistant in thirds without winding up in the slammer? The secret is ingenious. First of all, the blades are real, and they are dangerously sharp. They're not part of the secret. The secrets lie within the circular contraption. From behind, we can see that it's cleverly constructed to contain two different compartments. When the illusion begins, the girl is loaded into the device, but she's not being placed on the table, like we are led to believe. Here's how it looks from the back. We can see that her legs are being fed into the compartment in the top of the ring. She can even pull herself inside with the help of some handy hand straps. From the front, it appears as though she's lying across the table with her head and feet exposed on either end. But that's just an illusion. Her legs are snug inside the upper half of the circle. But what about the feet coming out of the other side? They look pretty real. That's because they are. Before the illusion began, another assistant was secretly concealed in the bottom half of the ring. It's her feet we see coming out of the side of the device. As the girl on top is being loaded in from one side, the hidden assistant below slips her feet out the other side. It looks uncomfortable, and it is. But these women know that mind-blowing magic comes with a price. In this case, you get two for the price of one. Now what about the torso in the center of the device? Here's the next secret. Preloaded into the top of the contraption is a body cast that perfectly matches the girl's fine form. Remember how the magician seemed to be just standing around while everyone else was doing all the work? He was actually doing the important job of blocking the center of the ring from view. From behind, we can see that another assistant was busy taking the body cast out of the top of the circle and placing it in the center. Here's what you'd see without the masked magician standing in the way. Maybe he does have a tough job after all. With the girls and the fake body in place, the magician is ready to insert the sharp blades. There's never any danger to the girls. 
here's the secret. From the back, we can see that the center wall of the contraption protects them from harm. All that's left to do now is spin the circle and create the illusion of separating the girl in three. From behind, we see it's all about the cleverly designed device and the flexibly designed girls. A setup like this could make the mind wander to other tricky situations. But enough about that. As for this trick, you now know the secrets. Up next, the magician shows you the devilish secrets to capturing an invisible spirit and conjuring up an incredible girl. And then, find out how a five-ton elephant appears from nowhere. The magician will now attempt to trap a spirit using nothing but this ordinary, bright-colored handkerchief. An accessory no well-dressed masked man should be without. He shows us that there is nothing on either side of the handkerchief, except for the chic and stylish pattern. He places the handkerchief down onto the table and magically summons a spirit. Do you see it? Of course not. Spirits are invisible. But just to make sure it doesn't escape, the magician folds in the corners of the handkerchief, trapping the invisible spirit inside. But I still don't believe there's a spirit in there, so he's got some convincing to do. And what's that? Look what just popped up. Maybe there's something inside after all. Better calm it down before things get out of hand. Nope, this little guy wants to come out and play. He's gone, and I bet he won't call in the morning either. So that's how you play around with spirits. So did the magician really trap an invisible spirit in his handkerchief? If you think so, you might be enjoying some spirits of your own. Of course, there's a secret. Aside from the obnoxious pattern, this seems like a very ordinary handkerchief. But in the magician's warehouse, nothing is ordinary. Secretly sewn into one corner of the handkerchief is a small wire rod. When he presses down on the end of this rod, it makes the handkerchief pop up and appear as if a spirit is trapped inside. Take a look at how harmless the gimmick really is. Just a thin piece of very stiff wire. At the corner, the wire has been bent at a slight angle. This bend gives the magician the leverage he needs to make the wire rod lift the handkerchief. Once the corners are folded in towards the center, all the magician has to do is locate the bend with his thumb and press down. The rod does the rest of the work. Ah, if only everything worked this easily. When he removes his right hand, he rolls the tip of the rod around with his left, convincing the audience that there is definitely some hanky-panky happening underneath the handkerchief. And that's how he captures a spirit. No one knows that gaudy fabric is hiding a tiny little rod.